Hey everyone, this is Lights Camera Initiative here with our review of The Forge of Fury. If you were with us last week, you know that uh, it just finished with a big bang and then a bunch of side stuff that was a little anticlimactic, but hey, I mean, that's just how it goes sometimes. We're gonna go around the table, we're gonna discuss uh, some stuff we felt about the Hidden Shrine, and uh, yeah, let's dive into it. And, uh... I think we started with David last time, so let's do the same again. Hmm. David, is there a uh, particular NPC in the uh, Fortress of Fury that you enjoyed? Uh, I'd say the uh, orc captain in town stuck out the most. Ah, yeah, yeah. Now, uh, it's kind of a bummer just trying to do his job, but the higher up wants to take a roundabout path, and that just kind of I don't know, just kind of stuck with me. Not to mention the problem in the area is about orcs, and he's an orc. Clearly, he doesn't harbor any super special interest in the problem, as a professional wouldn't. But uh, that also helps it stick out more, at least to me. Okay, that's fair. That's fair. Uh, Ed, did you have a you have an NPC uh, you liked? Uh, or that stood out. I realized Forge of Fury didn't have a whole lot of yeah, non-combat it NPCs. A whole lot. It, it, it wasn't like uh, it wasn't like Tail, or it wasn't like the first one where there was you know the camp with the Cobalt who mm. could have been enemies. Yeah. The, gob the goblins that we came across because there was a few that were also named. Yeah. Um, you know, I was going to say the ghost, but then I remembered. I think I'd actually go with um, the oh, I'm his name, but he was leading the orcs in the two. He had Ulfe? Yes. Ulfe the Great. Yes. Yeah. He was interesting, intimidating, and he himself also had character. He killed his dogs. We didn't. Okay, Everon killed his dogs. <laughs> Everon didn't kill his dogs. Dude, might as well have pulled the trigger anyway. <laughs> but yeah, no. Okay. Uh, even if <laughs> it was going to be called my fault, only one yeah. was my fault. The other two, he I had no, his fur baby. I had no part in that. Uh, but yeah, because um, it's, I don't want to say it's rare, but, but it's nice coming across a antagonist that is antagonist, they know they're an antagonist, and they actually have their character showing like kind of right from the get-go yeah yeah he, he definitely put a strong foot forward mm -hmm. uh, so uh I, I i agree jeff was there an npc you enjoyed more than the others mm. <laughs> you shit shit ah uh, <laughs> fuck you you shit yeah. <laughs> yeah. the first drugar the the spy yeah 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 she was good Funny thing, you totally could have parlayed with her. They had like stuff you could have, yeah. you could have, you actually could have parlayed with all the Durgar. But you didn't. Know, yeah. I mean, did they have any stuff we would would have been able to get that we couldn't get just by killing them? Uh, information. They uh. would have warned you about the ghost. They would have told you that there was a dragon down there. Uh, that might have been how it was. <laughs> Yeah. That would have been better. If you are, you stop, okay. stop being said, yeah. the book does say that they'll only give you information if you buy them off. Ah. So you would have had to bribe them. And they wouldn't have let you into the forge room, which means you wouldn't have gotten that potion, so... Yeah. Yeah. Whatever. Take what you can yeah. get. Take what you can get! Uh, yeah. Alright, well, let's, let's look at an answer, Jeff. Caitlin, was that an NPC you liked? I know what you think I'm going to say. I, I have. But actually, the Weeb Dwarf. The Weeb Dwarf? <laughs> I thought yes. I saw that. Oh, the, the, yeah, yeah, the guy who's a weeb about dwarf stuff? Yeah. yeah. Oh. I thought he was kind of funny because he was just back there like, well, can't go adventuring, but uh, I was, bring me stuff. <laughs> I was thinking about that. Yeah. yeah. But like. I honestly thought you were going to say Sassy or Mary Jane. <laughs> That's, oh, I that's what I thought. I was going to say sugar. That's what I thought she meant when she said, I know what she's saying. I thought she was. Oh, that's not a bad one either. Sugar could have also turned out to be a, been an enemy 
if well, we didn't well, throw a wrench in Maybe. Maybe. But she um, did. <coughs> Sugar's not actually in the book at all. I added her entirely just because. Yeah. <laughs> no, but I like the dwarf queen. I had the little song to her. Yeah, the dwarf queen. The dwarf boo. Yeah. Yeah, it doesn't call him a dwarf queen explicitly, but I just thought, wouldn't it be funny if he was just like super, ah, dwarf and stuff, ah. Uh, you know, superior in every way. Yeah. Stuff. Crazy collector, man. The dwarven sword can cut through a machine gun barrel. That's the. If I could survive it, I would have my <laughs> legs chopped in half. Walk around. That's a, that's like a good choice. He's a, he's, a, he's a funny character. Um, Rob, did you have a particular NPC you liked? Uh, I'm tempted to say Adala because of the chaos she caused, but. <laughs> If we're not, yeah, I thought it was, was cool too. Yeah. If we're not counting enemies or potential enemies, then I will go with the faithful animated table that somehow <laughs> seems dog like. Other than that, though, a dog. Wasn't it a portrait? No, no. It was, no, it was, it was a table first. You killed oh. the table, then the portrait attacks you. Oh, okay. Uh, well, we didn't actually kill the table. Well, we kept the table lived in the town, remember? Yeah, I thought, oh. you, I thought you were. You, like, you might be right. right. Um. Sid, do you have an NPC you like? Um, I guess, like, I wasn't, I didn't want to choose, like, an uh, enemy NPC, so I guess, uh, I, I guess it still counts, but I was going to choose, uh, go with, uh, Sugar, because there the entire time, I can't help but like the cat, and apparently turns out that it could have been a fucking enemy the yes, entire it could, time. Yes, it That's... Probably okay, see, what they're right referring there. to is normally I add a couple more enemies to encounters to make it harder because there's six of them instead of four. What I was originally going to do is have the dragon, uh, Jadewing, have a uh, kobold wizard um, that oh, basically nice worshipped it. Uh, Isn't Jadewing from 3.5? Nice You're right. It's, uh, it's Night Scale. Jadewing is from my 3.5 campaign. Game. Don't worry about it. Uh, I was gonna, yeah, I was also going to say yeah, sorry, Night Scale. Night Scale was going to have a cobalt wizard, and Sugar was going to be his um, familiar that was spying on them the entire time. And once the fight started, uh, the cobalt was going to have uh, Sugar rub up against Emeron's leg and cast Hold Person to just disable the healer at the start of the fight. That being said, because they did the dungeon kind of out of order, they came into the fight at level 4 instead of level 5. And I thought that might be a little too much, so I decided to just do the dragon on its own. I thought it would be a, a hard enough fight. And it, and it was rough. I mean, no one went down. You, you can argue it wasn't as hard as... I went down. I okay. went and down twice. That's fine. I mean, to be fair, you well, literally asked for it. At the end, <laughs> I didn't have anything else to do. I literally had to... That was the only way I could do damage. No, sometimes. it was great. Well... Maybe it didn't feel as hard as the end fight of the Summer Citadel. The Summer Citadel fight took took longer, but to be fair, there were a bunch of ads. You also, had to, lower level, yeah. way more yeah. dangerous. Yeah. Also, he wouldn't stop running the fuck away. <laughs> oh, into the water, or do you mean? Yeah. No, both. the dragon. Uh, both of them. Uh, though. Yeah, <laughs> they were both like, oh. Well, enemies are gonna. Don't hit me. They're not gonna sit there and be like, yeah, just gang up on me and beat me to death. Cowards. <laughs> no, 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 no. It makes no, sense. No, but it just Boy, happens the most to be. member of our party. How's up? We mean, how's up? You're the one that's always like, ah! you're running away and shit. Yo, wait, why did Squig run away from a fucking dragon? He's not. Nobody number. else is running away. Oh, that's not true. You he ran totally away. ran away. I was oh, yeah, no. Out. First off, he was attacked. Wow. He called for a tactical retreat. Yes. Also, I double checked. Nope, that's not true. He said something at the beginning. I actually just, when I was editing it this morning, he said we should back up away from the water and draw it out. And everyone said nothing. Except for Rob, who said, why don't we... Uh, Rob seemed to have heard him and also said, I think we should spread out. No one else said anything. <laughs> I just saw it this morning. He totally did. I heard him say At the thing, beginning of the fight, he was like, I let's back up and draw the dragon. Hey, it's not my fault the rest of you didn't listen to him. I said spread out because he has a breath weapon, but I also didn't go with his plan because I would be at the back, and I was like, I already took a dragon's breath. I'm not doing it again. Anyway, besides the point, let's move on to I'm the sorry, next Jeff. thing. Yeah. Uh, Rob, what would you say was the best fight? 
The best fight? Or did I say Rob? I meant David. Uh, now I've, I've switched it. The cycle's complete. Okay. Yeah. Now we're now we're going into star formation. Oh. Answer the question, Rob. What are you doing? Uh, I'm becoming my grandmother. Well, my grandmother calls me Matthew all the time, mm. and calls my sister Sasha. Ooh. That is not our names. Yeah. Somebody else you guys up now? No, Sasha's my mom, and yeah. Matthew's oh. my uncle. Huh. But my grandma fucks up names all the time. Fucking Rob. Uh, I'd say best fight was with that dude with the docks. Ofe? Yeah. Yeah, it was pretty dope. I'm not gonna lie. I liked it. I liked the Orogs. They're awesome. really good. Yeah, cool. I know the fucking Orogs. Very good. So, I yeah, liked the yeah. Orcs who just kept running in and out and was like, Arrow! <laughs> 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 Goodbye. That was funny. If, um, if every actually oh, did goddamn, I actually like forgot be... my favorite NPC real quick. My favorite NPC? Definitely the Succubus. I love that they add a bunch of like lies and stuff she uh, she can feed the party. Lies and half truths. Um, I thought it was really interesting. I thought it was cool. Now, David, did you add anything else you wanted to say about that fight? It was cool. Uh, I'm bad at this. Uh, Ed, what was your best fight? He had never claimed to be professionals. I would actually say probably the succubus like that was interesting <laughs> for some reason I was kind of expecting uh no I, th I think it was for some reason I was expecting something else and something else to go wrong like somehow the entire room was trapped and she like wasn't actually there and expecting something to be worse than it was say it ain't so yeah, but it still kind of turned out to be I'd say just as bad. Um, I feel like it also could have gone way, way worse. That that was yeah. really it the could've. one or the other type of fight. Either it was rough. Yeah, it, it was, was also. I, so very I thought it was definitely very interesting. Uh, Jeff, what do you think was the best fight? Best drinker. <laughs> Awesome. The first fight with the uh yeah. yeah. Well, it was a good fight. Yeah. Fuck you, you shape. Yeah. I like that one. <laughs> that was good. Invisible uh, Jirigar. It was. It was good. It was good. I agree. Caitlin, did you have a fight you particularly enjoyed? Uh yes. yes. The um. The one with the roper, even though oh. even though that was also horrible. <laughs> I thought it was cool. Ah. God. Mostly because I wanted to save my fish. <laughs> ah. Scripted to die. Okay. Cutscene death. Can't do anything about it. Unless I foresaw the roper somehow. It was like, I know what that is, and then attacked it. That's true. If you had a way of determining it was a roper. I suppose. As soon as you entered the room. You could cut its tentacle like we were doing in a fight with him. Sure. Anyhow, um, yeah, that's a good fight. I agree. Uh, Rob? Uh, typically, I would say the Succubus just because I thought it was hilarious and confusing. But yeah, uh, I agree. That fight was awesome. But I'll go with the rug because. Oh, God, that thing. Just because it really fucked Squig up super hard and he was gonna die. <laughs> to be fair, everybody helped. I almost helped it. I also helped in killing myself. Almost. <laughs> I just love how everyone was like attacking the thing, and then Karg ran up like... and was like, "Just pull it over." <laughs> yeah. What is wrong with you? Karg, the sole voice of reason. Okay, uh, but to be sometimes. fair, we didn't find out that it was going to hurt Squig until I first attacked. Yeah, but and after that, right on right. And then everyone kept going. Or someone went up and hit. Yeah, it might not I definitely kept going, though. That was because a... I, I switched to Blunt just to be safe. Yeah. But I yeah, thought you were, were right. I, I thought this was damage drug enough for, to let him go. Well, that's fair. I mean, if I didn't know any better, I probably would have tried to damage Yeah, we've, we've never seen this thing before. You can't unravel. <laughs> what are you talking about? <laughs> The Sopranos has taught me that rogues never become unraveled at inopportune moments. Uh, Sid, 
did you have a particular fight you enjoyed? And, you know, feel free to say uh, fight someone else's side. It's fine if that's your favorite fight. Trying to account. Someone can't steal your well, favorite fight. I'm trying fight. to account for all the fights that happened. Yeah, four title one. So I was thinking that too. Um, I want, maybe the, the, the first fight, when we came upon the forge, like the entire... Oh. Get trying to get into the place really like kind of set the mood for the whole well, area. I think not yeah. to copy you, Sid, but that I was my favorite fight too. Actually, I really enjoyed the first fight because you had to you walk you were going up this winding path and it was raining and then you were being rained down by archers and you had to force your way in through the doors and then once inside there were like ambushes and there were ones on the far side of a gorge throwing javelins at you. It totally reminded me of something out of Fire Emblem. Uh, like, if only there were casters on the other side of that gorge throwing fucking lightning bolts, it would have been exactly like a Fire Emblem map. And I thought it was really cool. Uh, and definitely, I think it's kind of the strongest fight in Forge of Fury, at least thematically. Yeah, I, I, like I, I will throw a shout out, though. I do enjoy all of the fights with the Duergar. And yeah. no one else threw a shout out to it. But I do really enjoy the fucking uh, the the zombie or the the white. Uh, you will oh. die, elf, and then it can drain your energy. Yeah, that was cool. It was bad cool. with the ogre skeletons. It was really cool. Um, yeah, that was a cool fight too. Forge, Forge has cool fights. I can also see kind of the siege potentially being a decent player killer. Like, yeah, possibly if people get if people get shoved off the side, that could be really interesting. I think it'd be really cool for there to be an adventure that's just a long siege. Uh, like, you need to siege a hobgoblin fortress or something in order to, like, take out their advanced scouts for knights. an army. Take you know, probably. Like a, and you're like, a, you're like an advanced strength force for, like, an army, and you need to soften up a hobgoblin fortress, and the whole thing is just like a siege and you need to disable catapults. That would be a really, really cool adventure. Yeah. Uh, there might be something like that on GM's Guild, so if I've, I've named some something that exists, please tell me, but uh, I think it's pretty dope. Yeah. If people uh, throw shit at us, we'll potentially look into it and probably maybe play it. Well, David, maybe. favorite room. Best, best room. It doesn't mm. necessarily have to be like a fight, although fight could be part of it. Mm. You know, it wasn't necessarily about the room itself, but the place where we encountered that ghost was pretty cool. The crossroads? Yeah. That'll be my pick. That was cool. I, I do like that, too. Um, Ed? Uh, I would... I was almost going to go with uh, the Dragon's Keep, just because I like gold. <laughs> But I think I actually have to go with the tomb, just with all the dwarven statues and like yeah. the actual warnings and it, it very so you like, know funny? set. The warning that. doesn't do anything. Really? If you're taking the stuff, there's no like curse or anything. Oh, yeah. I kind of feel like the, huh. even at least the bones or something should have animated. No, nope, there's it's just there to scare people off. It doesn't do anything if you take it. Oh. <laughs> That's a little disappointing. It's a little disappointing, I know. Damn. It would have been cool if they ro rose up and attacked it. Yeah. Just, and, like, started shouting, like, trespassers. But yeah, I, I, I agree. And I think it's pretty cool, too. Uh, mm -hmm. Jeff, did you have a room you particularly liked? How about or that room a, a that, uh, visual? How about that room that uh, had that fancy trap button? <laughs> the, the, the fire door. The fire door. Trap. <laughs> the fire door. <laughs> Oh my god, I love that fire trap just because the fact that it does damage over multiple turns is so good it because it's just like <laughs> <laughs> it was just running around screaming, squeak running down the stairs and jumping into the water. That was hilarious. Fire bad. <laughs> it's really funny. Fire real bad. Uh, yeah. Uh, Caitlin, did you have a room you particularly enjoyed? I like the room with those crazy things that could climb the wall where I just sat there pulling them up oh, and dropping the, them. The, the glitter hand with yeah. all the with all the puff balls Ricks. and the glow yes, fun, yes, yes, uh, yes. fungus. The Gricks are the enemies you're thinking. Yeah, Gricks. That whole the glitter hand is a really cool room. I uh, I do like the description of it. Mm -hmm. uh, that was super sick, and I like the uh, natural elements it incorporated yeah. into it. 
Yeah, no, it was cool. Uh, it was definitely cool to be able to attack from like a ledge. And I, I enjoyed the part where like you rode Mary <laughs> Jane Hershey up the wall, and it was, it was, it was cool. It was cool. Um, Rob, uh, I'm gonna say the first room we got into when we actually got inside with the bridge that got cut that we were fighting the yeah, on the side. Yeah, the rope of, bridge. To push over that yeah, that room was dope. Not bad. Yeah. Uh, Sid? Mm, room. Maybe like a toss up between the, the room with the fire trap and the. <clears throat> fire trap room's a good room. Maybe the succubus room. I, but I'm leaning towards the fire trap room because that's the one that led to that 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 uh, crossroad it crossroads into. No. What was no, the fire trap room leads down to the sorry, stairs. Sorry, sorry. No. Yeah, not not the fire trap room. The uh, the caves that we went to, into with all the yeah the glitter him. Oh yeah, yeah. I guess the glitter him. I re- the room with all the or the the, pe- the caverns with all the what you make, what are they called? Glowing fungi. No, no, no. no, no, no the, the the mosquito things. No, no. The, the no chocolate after ice. that the ones with the long... chocolate Yeah. Oh, oh troglodyte layer. Yeah. Troglodyte layer was really cool with yeah. the water. How you have to like go I through like, the water. I, I like that. Room. And they had the mud and waddle and uh, yeah, There's different things. Also the uh, the the shaman leader of the troglodytes. Yeah. Fire invisible. <laughs> <laughs> he was actually casting invisibility. Yeah, he turned invisible and ran away. I thought he was just doing something else. I thought he actually had invisibility. Yeah, he yeah. disappeared from sight. He cast invisibility and then he was like, fuck the shit, I'm out. It, it was dark. He could have just been walking out of our sight range. He was, he was not dead rogue. Um, my favorite room was definitely the, um, the, when you guys went down, when you first went down the stairs to the Glitterhane, and then you went down that side, like, water, and then when all the Strix attacked you when you were trying to recover Kark's bow. Ah. Uh. It just reminded me of a really classic, like, secret room you would find in, like, Icewind Dale or Baldur's Gate. It's like a little side secret. Um, or if you ever played uh, um, the other Baldur's Gate games, the one on uh, PlayStation, Dark Alliance, there were all sorts of secret, like, side rooms. That, that one does like sound that. familiar. Um, I have yeah. but I can... I, can I like isometric it. RPGs better, but I still did play the shit out of some Dark Alliance when I was a kid. Um... Hmm. So yeah, I really enjoyed that room the most. Now, to wrap things up, David, if there's anything that you could change about Forge of Fury, or you would recommend to either a player playing it or a DM running it that you think would improve the experience, tell the people. Uh, not really sure, because it all went pretty well. Or I feel it's something that's more opinion than anything. Or, or if so you feel I'll just something do a that's and missing. Say, I, I expected to find more of Durgadin's blades than like three. Yeah, I think there are only two listed in the book. I'm, I think maybe they leave it up to DMs to have more. I'm not oh. sure if it needed more, admittedly, but which is why I hesitated to say this anyway, but did anyway. I'm not sure if it needed more than three, but I thought there would be like ten or fifteen. I was, you'd be finding them sprinkled throughout the entire thing. That's fair. I was whether, also under the assumption that yeah. there would be whether or not it was like better than, whether or not it was better than it was sparingly sprinkled I don't know but uh that's, well, that's, that's, me, I mean, that's my pick players are gonna ex- once you get a plot hook like Durgaman's Blade maybe you'll expect to find more than two or if you don't want to make it more than two just make it one but make it like really special like instead of saying Durgaman's Blade call it Durgaman's Blade and make it like mm. a powerful weapon or something mm. so that they have to decide whether to keep it or not um, that that is an alternative you could do as well if you don't want to make a bunch of Durkin's blades. I would I would have like maybe a different price for like magical and non magical because not every Durkin's blade we found was magical. Yeah, well th- th- that's actually a thing I added because technically the only two, unless I read the adventure wrong, the only two Durkin's blades in there are magical: a plus one longsword and a plus two great axe. Yeah. The rest of them were just taken out. I uh, decided to sprinkle in some non magical Durkin's blades huh. because they had listed that you could turn over non-magical ones but they're not listed in the adventure so I thought oh they're just, I think they're just adding that in there for if you want to include extras so I went back and retroactively included them so you guys got a bit more treasure because again there's six of you instead of four so you have to split it more than your normal party would yeah. so 
Uh, but yeah, you know, definitely add more blades if that's something you think your players would like. Uh, Ed, is there anything you would improve or add or maybe take away from the dungeon that you think would make it a better, um, or any advice you would give a DM or a player? Take no rocks! Um, <laughs> take away no. the dragon. <laughs> <laughs> Replace it like with a rock. Oh, come on, the dragon was cool. And yeah. that is a thing that dragons can do that you do not see very often. They can totally just hide water and be like, "Yeah, blast, bye. I, I would actually say that the the town one, it felt like there wasn't, there wasn't anything to do in the town, even though it was a little sizable town. It kind of felt like there should have been a little something in there. But I think the thing that kind of stood out the most was they really, really talked up the orcs and that, you know, they're freaking going around everywhere, pillaging like everything. Yeah. But they're and taking prisoners. But there was only two in there. I I, I kind of feel like there's only two listed. I, I kind of feel like there may either may have or should have been more, uh, maybe a little bit more prisoners or a little bit more indication of what they were doing with the prisoners if they didn't you know demands weren't met okay. or that's fair. Were they trying to ransom them? Yeah, uh, they would capture people and then try to ransom them back to the town. Um, yeah. Because supposedly they would kill people that they were, were capturing, but we didn't find any like fresh corpses that the orcs could have killed or gotten tired of. Uh, you actually kind of did. The meat that was in the uh, dog's dish was a person that oh. they killed, who because their parents wouldn't, and that's what would have happened to the two people you did save if uh, if they were okay. left in there too long because their families couldn't pay to have them return. I, okay, I get you. Uh, I guess maybe yes there was a lot of them huge threat but kind of make it look like in their yeah. base that maybe, maybe a add a thing about a town actively being attacked that you could stop on the way there if you want to add a bit of extra a couple extra hours to the game that's something you could do too mm. like a burning gnome village or something that you can because I kind of alluded to that by having them meet um, a group of them coming back remember when yeah. you fought the orcs on the road and they, because they had pillage stuff. They had pillaged gnome mm -hmm. stuff, so. Or no, oh, make the the camp or the the family homestead where we're bringing the prisoners or the captives back to their house. Yeah. Had that been like sieged by orcs of mm -hmm. where's our money, type yeah, thing. You can, or yeah, having them be kidnapped. So you can do that. Uh, Jeff, do you have anything? Mm, I don't know. No, no, that's fair. Uh, Caitlin. I just had it. <laughs> oh, the skeletons totally should have come to life. Oh, oh, when you go into the crypts? Yeah. You know, that's fair. Dwarf skeletons? Yeah. Because yeah. uh, there were other living skeletons. Yeah, there were. Well, Those living. skeletons were animated by the ghost, but yeah, there, there could have been more. Uh, Rob, did you have any? No. no you, like, you liked it? Okay. Yeah, I liked it. That's fine. Um, uh, Sid, what about what about you? I could probably uh, you could try to make it more uh, action orientated uh, by like changing the narrative of the the entire uh, area. Uh, what was it Eric and Skeet? No, what was uh, it? You talking about yeah. called the Forge of Fury? Uh, the stone tooth is the, the mountain where they were. Um, you could change it to where it is under siege rather than the aftermath. So you come into a warring. Oh, siege. change the whole event. Yeah, I yeah. mean, that, if you it, run it might, Forge it, it, of Fury before and you're looking for a new way to do it, you could set it back 100 years and uh, you're helping the dwarves fight off the orcs. That would be a very different dungeon, but. It you know, if you've already done it. Oriented, yeah, it would but... definitely be closer to a siege. Um, and that is a cool way you can... you Because, can, you know, it's always possible to remix yeah. these old adventures and, uh, you know, make them, make them fresh again. It's very versatile. Uh, yeah. It would definitely be a lot uh, more different than a dungeon crawl. I mean, you still got the dungeon crawl, but uh, there's dudes everywhere trying to slit your throat. Um, as for me, I... Try to make it to where they get to the dragon last, because it's definitely <laughs> yeah. a little weird if they do stuff after the dragon. 
Um, that that is the advice. I, I'm I'm not sure how. Maybe don't railroad your players, but um, definitely use the succubus more. Maybe have her actively hunt them through the thing, or even the dragon. I mean, if the dragon has a way of figuring out um, <clears throat> where the players are, it can start stalking them, and then when they take a rest, oh, this is a great way to end it. Be like, oh, you're on uh, you're on guard. It's a rest, and then the dragon pops out and spits acid at you. That could easily get very deadly very quick for low-level adventures, but if you're playing with people who are very experienced and uh, kind of like losing half their party, uh, well, there, there are people who like really deadly campaigns. That's something you can do. Um, if you have multiple players and they are level 5 by the time you get to the dragon, I would definitely give the dragon an ally spellcaster. Maybe a level 5 wizard or cleric. Uh, kobold of some kind. Or hell, maybe something some that rocks. can buff the dragon. Put the succubus um, in that room. <laughs> put the succubus... <laughs> ally the succubus and the dragon. That'd be really devastating. Oh, the character the started getting is charmed. keeping me oh. captive. No. That's... It would, those are I all... kind of feel like the succubus deserves her own room. Um, maybe give the succubus... Uh, oh, one thing you could do that could be interesting is instead of having the mage be a ghost have him be just a dwarf mage who's under the charm of the succubus uh, that could make that room way more deadly oh, so, you, know, you, would, you would have to mage. you would have to and you could even still have the skeletons and the animated stuff in the other rooms you could just say it was after he did that and then summoned the demon and then before the demon has like drank him just said it just said it a little earlier you can make that more uh, deadly that way too also some of you might be like hey mario um Charms doesn't mean that people attack their own allies. That's not how charms work. And yes, that's technically true. But in old D&D, a succubus's charm attack did work that way. So I wanted to make it that way because it kind of makes the encounter a little toothless without it. She's a demon. I feel as if she should be able to dominate someone into attacking their allies. Because if she can't, that's... What the hell would she have done? Anything, just charm one of you and then... Kiss you would have... Yeah. Huh. But that sucks. Yeah, <laughs> that, is, that is really sucky. So I just made the succubus's charm effect a dominate effect, like the dominate person spell, because you can use that to make someone attack their own allies, and I feel that's appropriate that for definitely made a the succubus. More. Yeah, and def- it was probably the best encounter of Forge of Fury. So definitely listen to me. Make the succubus's charm a dominate. Um, <laughs> Anywho, make, that, do, make the succubus is trying to dominate. Need... Reopen that 9 11 investigation. <laughs> See what's that. <laughs> Get some McNuggets. <laughs> anyway, uh, so yeah, I'm Mario Vilas. You can find more of me at Lights Camera Initiative. I hope you enjoyed our review of the Forge of Fury. Um, additionally, coming uh, the next month, I'm going to be <laughs> on the Greyhawk channel. Uh, and I'm also going to be doing a one-shot on the Scraticus channel. Those will be in the description below the date and the Twitch channel. You can find those on. You know, come see me play with uh, not these people. Maybe it'll be different. Maybe they'll hate me. I don't know. Traitor! Uh, You're cheating on us. Traitor! I didn't know it was that kind of relationship, baby. Uh, anyway. Uh, David, do you have anything you want to plug? Uh, no. Just that I am artist David Harper on Instagram and Twitter. Okay. And... Uh, that, no, I, I ain't got shit. Uh, Super waitresses. Uh, yeah, Jeff. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, no. no. Caitlin? <laughs> uh, you can find her at Gobbit says on Twitter. Uh, I speak fluent. She. She uh, said uh, nothing and just put subtitles. She don't <laughs> put subtitles. <laughs> or not she, <laughs> whatever. Then they have to have go. I, sp- I speak fluent goat. Uh,. I don't have any social media in um, Reborn, right? So. With that said, do you have anything you want to plug? No, not really. Okay. Sid, say goodbye. Bye. Rob, say goodbye. I almost said David, I swear to God. I know. (laughs) I can't say goodbye. I hesitated there. Adios. Uh, Jeff, say goodbye. Bye. Ed, say goodbye. Later. David, say goodbye. Goodbye. Bye!